years ago, I tried to review some of the Halloween movies. And in the course of time that I reviewed those three films, something tragic happened. And while I may not remember most of it, I do recall the aftermath. The aftermath, of course, being that a terrible project was filmed, edited, and then put out into the world to be viewed by literally anyone. And now, it is time to take a look at the new Halloween film. And I have to say, I do not have the energy to expand on any channel lore for this movie. <laughs> Welcome back, everybody. It's been a hot minute since I made a review, but when a new Halloween movie comes out, gonna have to talk about it, especially since it's a sequel to the 2018 Halloween, which was a massive success as far as box office and acclaim goes. My thoughts on that 2018 soft reboot have changed since I initially reviewed it. I talked about that in this video, but overall, I still enjoy it. Like, it's still a fine movie. Right off the bat with the positives for this one, the kills. The kills are just mwah, A+, plus, immaculate, all around. A couple of them are, like, legitimately shocking. Like, there's, there's one in particular that when it happens, I audibly gasped in the theater. I don't, and I, a couple of other people in attendance did as well. Like, it was just... It was, it was a great kill, and it was very sudden. There's a couple of kills in here that are also just so over the top that they're ridiculous, and I love them for that. I do think it's funny that there's apparently this whole thing right now about how people are pissed that Michael Myers kills a whole crew of firefighters. <laughs> As if that is the worst thing he's ever done. Contemplates killing a baby in the last one? Damn, that's crazy. Kills a couple of firefighters in this one? Full stop. <laughs> Michael is a monster. <laughs> Another really good thing in this movie is some of the performances. First one that comes to mind, Anthony Michael Hall as Tommy Doyle. He's, he's phenomenal. And he really just has this air of uh, panic through the whole movie. Like, panic being p presented as just flat-out rage. Like he wants Michael dead. When he finds out that Michael is out doing his Michael Myers thing again, he is on a mission through the whole movie. And he really keeps up that energy through the whole thing. And he's he's probably giving the best performance, one of the best performances in this film. And then Robert Longstreet as Lonnie. We, we definitely don't get much of Lonnie at all. Like in the original film, all uh, I mean, all I can remember from Lonnie is when Loomis is being a dick to him. Hey, Lonnie, get your ass away from there. Just scaring kids for no reason. I, I love Loomis. But Robert Longstreet really brings a very sympathetic nature to Lonnie because right with Tommy, he is terrified of... Michael Myers, the boogeyman, he is horrified. And now his son, who is Allison's boyfriend, we saw him a little bit in the first one, he's he's a lot more involved in this one. That that's his son. So his his son is dating one of the Strode girls. So he's very involved in this and trying to hunt down Michael to make sure that his son, his son's girlfriend, everyone in the town is safe. Then you have the three Strode women. I know that Lori is the only one with the last name Strode, but that you, you have th those three. They... They're fine. Jamie Lee Curtis isn't really given much to do here. She's in the hospital for the entire film. Which, I mean, you know, whatever. Um, a Halloween movie that doesn't include a lot of Laurie Strode, it is what it is. We've had horror mo Hor We've definitely had horror movies, Brandon. We've had Halloween movies that don't include Laurie Strode at all, so... Having her not do a lot in this one, it, it, like I said, it is what it is. It doesn't affect me much. The issue that I have with 
Lori in this one is that everything she says is a trailer line. She has a whole monologue at one point that just sounds like it was recorded simply to put in the trailer to build up the movie. A lot of people have that problem in this, actually. Like, the script itself, I didn't like at all. It seemed very much like a first draft script that just never got a second run through. And this may be a bit of an exaggeration, but I, it, it, this is what it felt like. Michael has terrorized this town for 40 years. So tonight, he dies. For 40 years, Michael has terrorized this town. So he dies tonight. Tonight, Michael dies. Because for 40 years, he has terrorized this town. Tonight, Michael dies because he has terrorized this town for 40 years. So it really just kind of got like, yeah, we, we get it. All right, moving on. And I do know that there's this whole aspect of, you know, like mob mentality that's going on in the movie. So at first there, there's this chant that everybody starts to do and that's evil dies tonight, which it, it bothered me a little at first that they kept saying that, but in, whatever, it is what it is. This is the mob rally cry. I get that. But when Allison picks up a shotgun, cocks it, and then basically says one of those lines that I just jokingly said, it's, 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 a, it's a little much. The script just felt very overwrought. Like they really wanted to hammer it home. That Michael is, is bad news. Are you really trying to say that you expect a good dialogue from a slasher? Says the fan of Friday the 13th. Okay, yes, I do really like the Friday the 13th movies. But there's a reason that I enjoy entries like The Final Chapter and Jason Lives and not entries like Jason Takes Manhattan. I just want, I, I want, I want a good script. I know that we come here to see the big mo movie monster kill a bunch of people, but I also want to actually feel like I'm watching real people. And while people are giving these really honestly kind of cringy trailer lines there are still like Allison she does a good job in this she has one scene spoilers for Halloween 2018 I guess I don't know why you would be watching this if you haven't seen that but she has a scene where she's you know grieving the fact that her dad died and that is her whole motivation for wanting to go after Michael because he killed her father so Andy Mitichak Allison, I really hope I'm pronouncing that right. She does a really good job. Aside from a couple of corny lines here and there, she does give a good performance. But Judy Greer, just like in the last one, Judy Greer is playing Karen, Lori's daughter. And the problem that I and some other people had with her in the last one is that her her performance is very dry. Like, she, and she's a, she's a really great actress. So I don't know what's going on here. Like at one point, Allison is like crying over the fact that her dad just got murdered. And then Karen is just like, yeah, I know, but he'll always be with us. Like he just died. He was just murdered by Michael. He, he's gone. Like this, this happened like 45 minutes ago because this movie picks up right where the last one left off. So he is freshly dead. And she's just like, yeah, well, you know, it is what it is. It's, it's, she's just very cold and it, I don't like it. I don't understand the choice there. She does have a couple of really good moments, like as the movie goes on, especially like around the third act. But yeah, she, I don't know, just really weird character acting choices that I, that don't really vibe with me personally. You do get some, you know, kind of cool backstory when it comes to, a couple of the cops in the town and flashing back to that original night in 1978 and you get different perspectives of things and that that was that was actually really interesting to see and a lot of the side characters are a lot of fun too there is this uh couple they just call themselves big john and little john they they were they were probably the best part of the movie because this this movie has a lot of comedy in it just like the 2018 one did I liked it in this one more than the one than in the 2018 one. I 
I don't know why. I don't know what was different about the fact that there was comedy in it, but I think it worked better in this one for the most part, especially with Big John and Little John. Like they were incredible. So funny and they're just, their banter back and forth, the chemistry that they had throughout this Halloween night was great. So overall, while I do have some serious issues with the script and the dialogue and some of the character choices, I really had fun with the movie. The kills were phenomenal. Some of the characters were incredible. Performances from choice actors were also really good. So I'm going to say that Halloween Kills gets a B minus. Have you guys seen Halloween Kills yet? If you have, let me know down in the comments what you thought about it. Or are you excited for Halloween Ends? Because I know I am, because with how this one left off, I think I have an idea of what they're, how they're gonna wrap this all up and what they're gonna do in the next one, but the ending of this one really surprised the hell out of me. So I, I, there's really anybody's guess as to what they're actually gonna do in Halloween and so whatever it is, comment down below, let me know. Go ahead and check out my social media. The links to all of that will be down in the description. But before you do anything, go ahead and hit the like and the subscribe so that I can see you guys next time.